This week on Hermitcraft, and also on Hardcore Hermits, and also on Fullcraft, stuff happens. Now let's talk about it. Welcome to the Hermitcraft Recap, a channel that might be spreading itself too thin lately, what with the re-releases, Hardcore Hermits episodes, and now Iskal's pet modded series. Which is why I, Pixel Riffs, and our writers LoyXP, will say this out of the gate. This is an unofficial Hermitcraft fan channel, so despite Foolcraft 3 being actively not Hermitcraft, we could, in theory, make a recap about it. Heck, this very channel started as a Foolcraft 2 recap channel. But at the same time, both of us have day jobs and personal lives to worry about on top of chronicling two Hermitcraft-related series at this point. So don't expect us to make a week-to-week -week show about the recently started Season 3 of Foolcraft, but we might figure out something eventually. In the meantime, watch some episodes yourself. There are jobs for us there that we can undertake, and um, we can basically earn money this season and, and trade with money and stuff like that. Can we get sound effect? Dun, 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 dun. On the <laughs> and with all that out of the way, let's take a look at all the events and mishaps that occurred on the Hermitcraft server this week. Beginning with Joe Hills, who decided to visit the end and get ender pearls, but was slightly distracted en route. This is some flame created by Wells Knight. Somehow he set these iron blocks aflame and they stayed aflame. It's magic, you know. The pearls are purely practical. He needs to get up into the roof of the Red Sky Bay Nether Hub to continue coating it with glass. While he's there, he talks about being part of this season of Hardcore Hermits, which we are also recapping on this channel. You can check out our first episode in the iCards, but make sure you check out your favorite team's videos too. Collecting every block and item in the game might sound tedious, but trust us, it's hilarious. Features myself, Zombie Cleo, and Python GB. And, you know, we might not be the winningest team, although we might be also the winningest team, but we are definitely the banteringest team. And speaking of hilarious, here's Joe talking about children being trapped in an inflatable maze. Every 40 minutes, they have to shut these things all down for about five to 10 minutes. The guy walks over and sees all these parents standing near this maze and goes, are there any kids in there? And then we all go, yes. And then he flips the switch and says, well, you should probably get him out. And the thing just starts deflating. Because, like, it's kind of pretty heavy plastic for, like, a bunch of three, four, and five-year-olds to get out of. A self-collapsing maze sounds like a solid idea for the gaming district, now that we think of it. Mumbo might be able to give it a try now that the Elytra course is finished and officially named Hermit Flies, which is not at all like that one movie with Jeff Goldblum. Instead, it's a colourful set of twists and turns, which Mumbo is actually getting semi-competent at. Did you see that? Did you see that? I mean, that's that's definitely the fastest I've ever done it, and definitely the most silent I've ever been in a Hermitcraft episode. Going out and massacring a chicken, I've got the record book, and I've just looked at the timing of my run, and I managed to do 22.17 seconds. So that is, that's my record. Ah, the benefits of editing out all the takes where you smash your face into the ground. After a brief shaders tour of some of his recent landmarks, he remembers to actually decorate the tunnel section and declares the course officially open. Let the face smashing begin! Good luck, and try not to die, Mumbo, record book, firework rocket. Despite not participating in Hardcore Hermits, Mumbo seems to have caught advancement fever from somewhere, because he spends a whole episode diving into the server-specific challenges. It turns out he doesn't even have his own advancements yet. Look, I've got two advancements right here, and <laughs> I haven't actually achieved either of them. So what I thought we'd do is I thought we would do a two-hour advancement gathering session. I'm going to see how many advancements I can get within the two-hour period. After renaming a horse multiple times to no effect, he successfully manages to plant six saplings in a row, well done there, takes a daredevil flight into the depths of the end, gets his redstone professionalism certified. Uh, what can we replace? What can we replace? Fishing rod. Yes, I am. I absolutely am. Now I have the achievement to prove it. And actually builds a sugarcane pillar, sugarcane brick wall. He even rounds out the episode with a freshly brewed cup of tea that, incidentally, lets him breathe underwater for a bit. Yes! There we go, 22. Now that is actually 
the goal that I wanted to get to because we had 44 advancements left to go when we started this episode and we have managed to clear off 50% of the ones that we needed to get. We find out that a hermit does indeed fly, but like six seconds slower, when Azuma gives the freshly built minigame a try. The turns and dives prove themselves a bit too sharp for X, but who am I to talk? I'm not the one scoring half a minute for the lap. 30.5 seconds, not bad, right? Well, if you look at my hotbar, it took all of the food that I had and 63 rockets to do that, because I had many, many attempts. On his walkabout of the server, Azuma also takes note of the finished community area, once again paying Scar the rep points he's owed and, you know, not forgetting the big dig. But back to his own to-be-completed project, there's a hole in his base and someone gotta hold it even deeper. Is work on the black hole, which has actually come a fair way along since we last saw it. It kinda doesn't look like much has changed at all, because you just look down and you see a big black space, but over there on the side, can you see it coming together? The two approaches to incorporating the foggy opening into the rest of the base are as follows. A. Surrounding it with a secure protect contain style military blockade, or B. Just throwing a bunch of bushes around it. You can guess which one Shashwami decides on for now. And uh, it's just got me excited for what's coming next really. While I've been working on this area I've been envisioning some ideas for this area here. Uh, but we've got a lot of work to do with the swamp because what I'm going to do is just like I said before, turn all of this right here into swamp and have it overhang the black hole and that I think that's going to look really really great. Coincidentally, False Symmetry throws some shrubbery at her base too, but then again, when doesn't she? Thanks to a ton of custom trees and several brand new buildings, all fitting nicely into a single time lapse, the broken apart and decrepit district of her island base is, I want to say structurally complete? It really does look done and dusted, but one can always fit more custom fire pits into the scenery. Hey guys, the campfire still works. Oh yes, and it's, oh, I forgot how simple it was. Like, I, I'm pretty sure I can build the second one just myself. Because like I said, at the beginning of this base, when I decided what I was going to do, I wanted this place to feel alive and interesting when you walked through it. I don't want people to be coming along here and flying over it all the time, and that be the only place and only way that people saw it. Scenery that Scar is at odds with over at Scar City, because screw that hill and everything it cared for. And the issue is, my perfectionism has come into play where I must take down said hill because I can't have this hill here because the hill is going to make it out of scale because we can't just like build the other one like right up here or anything. The armor standy fire hazards won't play with Scar either because the Fire D of Scarlandia has three decorative trucks patrolling the area while conveniently not actually moving at all. And yes, one of them is next to that launch pad with all the trees around it, almost like that area is at risk of spontaneously bursting into flame. All the firefighters are zombies and they got their turnouts on looking super fancy. They got the front lights on there. Now I was thinking that I could put some uh, item stands here or item frames and then put maybe axes and maybe helmets and stuff in this portion of it. But uh, yeah, love that fire truck. Let's go take a look at the ladder truck now. But combustion engines are in fact an oddity around there because starting this week, Scar City is running on the relatively clean energy of solar daylight sensors and giant wind turbines that are not actually spinning. Man, you've got to hand it to him. This city looks mighty alive for a place where basically nothing moves. I want to stop and answer a question that I got quite a bit in the last comments, and that was the interiors of some of the structures and why they're not all complete. And the reason being is I'm just a simple scar and I only have so much time and resources before we, you know, add all the interior details to these areas. I just feel like it's more important to get the skyscrapers all in place and then start working on it instead of spending, you know, countless hours and weeks working on just one interior and not being able to build all the different skyscrapers that we have. And finally, there's Cub Fan, which is a sentence I've been saying a lot lately. Hmm. Gotta start putting mumbo at the end of recaps like we used to. Anyway, we're left quite surprised when Cubfan checks the Llama Land profits. As in, there actually are some. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that we have received a sale here at Llama Land. At long last, somebody has come and purchased llamas. And not that we're judging, but if the viewers could help us figure out who has purchased stuff from Llama Land, that would be very much appreciated. Really, we just want this info so we can add, but with llamas, to their icon in the lower left. Uh, whoa. Whoa, that's some extreme mountaineering right there, jeez. 
Cubvan's own project for the week is working on the ravine he has, splitting his island in half as if it was some sort of orc breeding ground. As with all natural type builds, this one is taking its time to start shaping up, which is why frequently updating your maps is ever so satisfying. So a lot wider, quite a bit wider actually, but a lot more structured and less jumbled up. Like there's not a whole lot of stone in these regions anymore. Uh, but like I said, it has taken an incredible amount of time, way more time than it looks like. Uh, and the ravine has grown actually quite significantly from what it initially was. It's too bad the server will probably reset for the update aquatic, but if anything, this thing would make an amazing bubble bath if you filled it with water. And that's just about it for this week's recap, except to remind you that the Hardcore Hermits recap was released yesterday. Check it out while it's still fresh and before everybody dies to Phantoms and the Drowned. Our writer is XP, and my name is Pixel Riffs. Leave a like while you're still here and subscribe so you won't miss future recaps. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.